guys, this is Tech It Out, and I don't know if you noticed, but a few weeks back I posted something on my Twitter about my Pentium 4 Hackintosh, and it got a lot of likes and retweets, so I figured I'd make a quick overview about it today. So, let's get started. So, is there really any point in doing this? Not really, because you really can't do much. I can't even get a newer version of iTunes to install because not even the ones that are compatible. I'm really not sure why. I'm not sure if it knows that it's on a Hackintosh or something like that. But um, there's a bunch of bugs and glitches. So like if I click about this Mac, it's just going to crash and restart. And it's really weird. So there are quite a few bugs. But I mean, some things work fine. I'm not connected to Ethernet. Otherwise, I think the Internet would work or it should work at least. Um, it does actually detect external hard drives I have tried it before when I was trying to install iTunes and as you can see it can detect my other Windows partition here which I will show you what that's like in a minute um, so this was actually my very first computer and one day I just decided to try to install Mac OS there's not really any point in doing this unless you just want to learn from it because um, it's kind of cool to say that you were able to make Mac OS run on a PC, but there is a lot to go into it, which I will not be covering in this video. So let me just go ahead and shut it down just so I can show you what it's like to boot it back up because <laughs> that's honestly the most interesting part. Um, no. Yeah. So as you can see, it is shutting down right now, and I'm going to actually boot it into Windows next time just to show you that it will boot into both, and then I will go back and boot into Mac OS um, just to show you how that works. Okay, so as you can see, it is shut down. So I just started it back up, and we should get a bootloader screen. So you just press any key on the keyboard. So now, as you can see, we've got Windows and Mac OS. So I'm just going to click Enter on Windows, and this is Windows XP, despite the Windows 7 logo, or Windows Vista, I guess. So, as you can see, it has booted up. So I'm just going to type in my password. And as you can see, we are in, so this actually has a lot of stuff from when I was a little kid. Um, I actually used, I believe it was this tool over here to partition the hard drive. Wait, no, it wasn't that one. Where did it go? I think it's in start. I used um, a tool called uh, Easy Us Partition Master. That's the program right there. As you can see, it's been kind of slow as it is a... Um, almost 20 year old computer now because this computer was made in 2005 it is the Optiplex GX 280 it actually has a Pentium 4 which is 3 gigahertz and it has 3 gigabytes of RAM and a 75 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive you know it's really sad when Apple doesn't put a 7200 RPM hard drive in their iMac when a 2005 computer had one so I'll just show you what that program is like. So I use this program to partition the hard drive. So if you do want to partition your hard drive, it is actually free. If you go back and download an older version, it was able to partition Windows XP without um, erasing anything. But it took about an hour or so uh, to create the partition. So it took a really long time. It's not as easy as it is in Windows 10. So I'll just show you what it looks like here. So as you can see, it says disk one, and I have two um, partitions here, and it's apparently not sure what the other one is. I guess it can't read um, Mac OS. We can go to, or I guess it will be Mac OS extended. So if you go in here, it only detects one disk, which is weird because before I installed Mac OS, it detected them both. So I guess it just can't read the format. So Let's go ahead and restart, and I'll show you what it looks like booting up Mac OS. So by default, it will boot up Mac OS, so if I don't press anything, it will by default boot up Mac OS. 
but if I hit any key, then I can hit it again. And as you can see down in the corner of the screen, it says boot, and you can actually, um, you can type commands in. So if I want to do a verbose boot, I can type dash V, and that will show um, the verbose boot. So that's good if you, especially if it's like a first time boot, so you can know what any errors you're getting, so you can try to fix it. Because I did have several errors, and I had to um, actually just install a different kernel. That was the issue when I tried to do this, because there's a few different kernels you can choose from, because this is actually IATK OS, not just the regular Mac OS Snow Leopard. So I can type dash V just to show y'all what it looks like. Normally it would just go to the Apple logo screen, but I'll just show you something different here. So this is what Verbose looks like. So for some reason it no longer takes me to the passcode screen. The very first time I booted it up it did and I had to type in my passcode but for some reason it just doesn't do that anymore and I'm really not sure why that if I actually use this computer that could be a major security um, issue. So I guess I wonder if you can change the password. So there's old password, new password password hint so I wonder if I just changed it would that fix it it probably would um, so if I click the lock to make changes it will actually let me add more users so hmm I wonder if I can do that I might want to try that real quick Okay, so it says turn off automatic login. So that's what I need to do. So I can go here to log out, it looks like. And let's see about swapping users. So this is what it looks like in um, Mac OS to change profile. See, as you can see, it says IT ATK OS. So I've never actually done that. That looks really nice. So I wonder if this is still glitching out right here. Yep, still glitches out. So it just kicked me out of the profile. So here's the password. Um, I wonder why it was doing an automatic login, though. That's a little weird since there is a password on that account. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to make this video just to kind of show you um, what I've done. There's really not much you can do on it right now. Um, so... It wasn't very interesting. Maybe I'll be able to get it to work better in the future and make another video. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like these, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below. I'm debating doing a tutorial on this, but I'm not sure that I will. So just leave me a comment down below on what you think I should do um, about the tutorial, if you want a tutorial or not. So... I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.